Hello, welcome to our channel, Thinker Themer. I am Maggie, the themer. I'm all about story and theme and how well it's integrated in a game. And this is my tranquil fiance, Amy, the thinker, who's all about mechanics and uh, yeah, what makes a game tick. Today, we're gonna be looking at the game Tranquility, which is by James Emerson and the absolutely stunningly beautiful art um, that is by Tristan Rossin, who also was the artist behind Brick and Mortar, which we reviewed um, a few weeks back. So, Amy, how do we play this game? <laughs> so, this little game, Tranquility, comes in a tiny, tiny, tiny little box. Actually, it's just a small little card game. Um, we got this through Kickstarter, so also backed for the game mat that you'll see here. But um, essentially, the game mat is just a grid of 30 squares, which you can construct if you've just got the card set using um, the border cards that come with it. Um, but this game is a cooperative game and the idea is simply that you will place 30 cards in sequential order without messing that up by the time you run out of cards in your deck and in your hand. So together you're trying to place 30 cards, but the cards in the deck go from 1 to 80. So there's a bit of room there um, to find the 80 cards that you can place in sequential order. Mm. All you're doing in this game, I've set up the game here, you can see that um, I've put some cards out as if we were about a third of the way through the game. And you can see that down here we have two. So if someone has played two, which is a low number, which you'd want to have in the beginning. And what happens is you're placing cards in sequential order along the rows all the way up into the top right hand corner, which should be the highest card because there are 80 cards and one of us has drawn an 80, it makes sense that it would be in this top right hand corner. Now the way you play this is very simple. You have a hand of five cards each and all you're doing on your turn is either placing a card down into the play space or you are discarding two cards. At the end of your turn, you draw up from your pile back to five cards. But the interesting thing is when you're deciding where to place your card on this, um, on this mat here, because for example, if I had the number 54, I wanted of course to fit between 50 and 61. And I might gamble that we're not going to get a card closer to 50. But what happens is when I place that 54 down next to 50, there's a gap of four. And I, it means that I need to discard that number of cards from my hand. So you are placing cards, but you're trying to get them as close as possible together because otherwise you're burning through your deck, which is going to end the game before you're able to complete the 30 squares. Now there's two other complications in this game. Actually, the biggest complication is that you can't talk to each other. This game is meant to be played in silence. Therefore, the tranquility. The tranquility mm. of the game. It's a tranquil but stressful game. Super stressful. Like <laughs> tense, yeah, in a good way. Yeah. But there are two other main cards that you need to think about in this game. The first is a start card. Now, one of these has to be played and everybody has one somewhere in their deck. So as soon as you draw this, you have to play it. And when you play this card into the corner of your grid, collectively you have to come up with eight cards that you want to discard from the game. Now you can't talk about what values those cards are that you're discarding, but you can say that I've got two rubbish cards that I'm willing to get rid of. Um, and collectively across the you know five players, you're all coming up with eight to get rid of. Again, when it's a two player game, that's actually quite a significant portion of your hand. Mm. Um, you might get rid of you know four cards each, which means that you're getting rid of cards that you could potentially be using in um, the grid to complete the game. The other interesting card is the finish card. Now the finish card, there are five of them in the deck and um, in order to win the game, once you've completed the 30 squares, someone has to have one of these that they can play before no one else can make another legal move um, in order to seal the deal, finish the game and say that you've won. Um, now there are expansions that come with the game as well, uh, but just talking about the base game, Maggie and I actually had um, quite a lot of fun trying mm -hmm. to work out um, how to come together to to finish the game. Yeah. It yeah. actually took us like, like a few tries yeah. <laughs> before we could actually win the game at two players. We've also played it um, at full five players mm -hmm. as well. Yep. Yep. So let's talk about the theme. Look, 
in theory, what you're, the theme of this is meant to be that you are uh, creating the journey for this boat to go from the start sequentially through to the finish card. It's, the artwork is beautiful, but the theme is really pasted on. It's, it's pretty really, abstract. Yeah, it's, it's a numbers puzzle game um, of trying to like space things out and see how many you know, you're going to bank or, or uh, discard and that sort of stuff. There's really no theme. Um, it is the artwork is beautiful and the mat is super uh, satisfying to play with. So as a themer, I found that like the first couple of games, I'm like oh, well, like it just felt too abstract for me. So like that abstract you know, thing. You also don't like abstract. I don't games. like abstract yeah. games. Yeah, but the the beautiful artwork kind of kept me engaged long enough that then I kind of got into the whole. Come on, we can crack this. We can crack this. And then we actually got faster and faster to the point where it's like, okay, I feel like we've got now figured out the basic puzzle, um, and now we can add, throw in some of the the expansions. Yeah, to as make well. it harder. Yeah. And um, like we don't play cooperative game. You know, if no. you've watched our channel, you know we're into very tight competitive games. But this was so pleasant. Maggie and I were playing it of an evening with a cup of tea. And what's nice about it is that you're just kind of like placing one at a time and, and it has a nice pace to it. And when, you know, it's it's not long, I think it takes no. around 15, 20 minutes to play yeah. a game. And then, so as soon as we've failed, you know, like let's go again and it's very easy to set up. I think what's also really interesting is Maggie and I were going to um, a dinner party um, now that restrictions have Yay. eased a little bit in Australia. Mm -hmm. um, and there were six of us, but we only knew really two, two of the four people that were going to be playing with us and they were kind of casual gamers mm. and then their partners were not really gamers at all, at all. Yeah. and so we wanted to take another game actually we took awkward guests with us um, but we wanted to bring this to first of all see how it would play at five but also it just felt like a great game to to warm people mm. up yeah. and it was amazing for yeah. that because everybody's focused together on the puzzle mm. um, it really helped people kind of kick their brains into mm. gear um, before we hit them with a harder game <laughs> um, but I really like I really appreciated seeing it through their eyes as non-gamers and them realizing how difficult it was not to talk to each other yeah. like it was really fun yeah. I thought yeah and um, there's kind of a lot of replayability here mm. um, I was first at first worried because once we cracked it I yeah. felt like then we were just winning game after Very game after game and easily yeah, yeah because you kind of get an idea of where numbers should be placed mm. in the grid but what's really cool is we've started to introduce some of the um, expansion cards that come in the box. Um, for example, this jagged rock, every time you play a card, you move it um, to one of the rows and mm. that means the next player can't actually play a card into that row. So that's just a really simple, easy little expansion. Um, another one is these, these mm. monsters and when you have a monster in your hand, you have to play it to destroy a card that's out on the grid and therefore, you know, creates a new gap and you can't actually win the game if you still have these remaining mm. in your hand. So they need to be played. So that was another cool little one. Um, so we're looking forward to like adding them in. There's quite a few different variants yeah. that you can play with this game. But um, I think that in terms of replayability, it's going to be more of a game that we get out when mm -hmm. we have new groups of people yes, or right. combinations of people that aren't used to playing together. Because there's a really, as much as we don't like co-ops, <laughs> this is a really nice, fast one just to get everybody on the same page yeah. um, to think about, you know, puzzling out yeah. things before we attempt to teach them all another game. Yeah. So uh, I'm really happy with this as a filler. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, it's a great one. And so... If you're watching this review and you own a copy of The Mind, which was one of the most popular games and there's been, you know, The Mind Extreme, um, yes, there are a lot of similarities <laughs> here. We own both. I would say that, you know, The Mind, because you all have your cards in your hand and it's about timing, I think that it's easier for that game to go off the rails. I'm, I might actually say yeah, that it's harder and for people who are new to gaming, it's more nerve wracking because you're in charge of mm. like the timing and you might mess it up for everyone. This one feels much nicer yes. in that you're just waiting for your turn. You're only placing one card and there's no real right or wrong. I mean, there's definitely wrong moves. <laughs> there's wrong there's move. definitely wrong moves, yeah. um, but it doesn't feel as aggressively like, oh, you ruined yeah. everything. Like 
it does in the mind because the mind you're losing lives and it really yeah. feels like you're it's on really the brink. unforgiving. It is very unforgiving. Mm, yeah. So this is way more forgiving. The other thing that I would add is that with this one, there's more layers. To me, I feel like if I'm playing the mind, it's like it's like that timing game and once you're kind of into that, like that's it. Whereas with this, because of the expansions, you're throwing it other, other layers to the puzzle. So it feels like from a replayability point, I would always prefer to play this one um, and try it time and time again. Yeah, and I think especially like whether you've got the play mat which highly recommends seeking yes. it out so um, but if you can't even though you're setting up this grid space what I like about that is even though it's a small card game it feels like there's more table presence it feels mm. like everybody's leaning in and looking at something and that's you know that's why we play games is to get everybody away from their phones kind of focused on yeah. this one thing and I feel like when it's a small card game that relies on people just holding cards in their hand like the mind or like any kind of card game um, there's less of a physical presence which makes it yeah. feel less like a board game yeah. so that's what I really appreciate about this game compared to the mine we'll probably keep both in our collection yeah. I I think we would get this one onto the table definitely. more yeah definitely. yeah so this game also has a solo mode where you're essentially combining a two player the two piles of a two player game into one big pile so you're still it's pretty much the same puzzle that you're trying to figure out I found that uh, that one really lends itself well to adding in more difficulty with the expansions. Otherwise, once you kind of get a feel, either, weirdly, it actually felt harder as a solo than as a two player after mm -hmm. we had figured it out. Don't know why, but I had also kind of thrown in a couple of the, the, the expansions, definitely needed for that. It is a really good puzzly experience as a solo player. Is it better with or without Amy? I, I still feel like it's better with Amy. I it actually has to really say that. well. She's here. I'm so, right here. How awkward. Uh, no, but I really, I really do enjoy the experience of playing this with other people. But it works really well as a solo as well. So that's our review of this little game, Tranquility, that we absolutely adore, and oh my goodness, the artwork. Mm. Um, James Emerson, the designer of this game, currently has another game on Kickstarter called Tessera. If you're watching this um, right now when it launches, um, it's a tile laying game uh, with domino style pieces. I'll be picking that up because it looks like another great little simple game. And if it's anything like this one, it will probably be getting quite a bit of time on our table with the varied gaming groups that mm. we play with. So that's our review. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel, hit like, and we love the conversation in the comments. So please keep hitting us with your opinions about tranquility. If you've played the game, about how it compares to the mind, we would love to hear from you. But otherwise, bye for now.